What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Sit Down Saturday. And today we are going to be talking about the most recent reveal from Hasbro Pulse for their latest crowdfunded project, which happens to be the Victory Saber Star Saber Victory Leo Ensemble. I'm up to my ears in Victory Sabers. When it rains, it pours, and it's either feast or famine, it seems. So I guess that's the name of the game when it comes to today and what we're going to talk about it, at least in the previous 30 days and kind of all stays in the same pocket. We're going to talk about a number of things regarding it, its progress, the confidence in the brand, uh, what other options are really available, how I feel about the product itself, and what impact, if any, did Unicron have on it. So before we do that, obviously we have to do first a little bit of housekeeping and we'll start with anybody down south or that's really affected by this storm. I hope that you're you're safe. I hope that you're being safe. I hope that you're taken care of. Thoughts and prayers, likes and shares. My heart goes out to you. Weather the storm, both figuratively and literally. The Ravage from Black from Trans Art. Now, some people said that this was was a KO. But as it turns out, it is not. My good friend John Garinger hit me up and said, I see people saying that the Ravage is an oversized KO of the original Beast Wars figure. He didn't have a US figure and the figure they are referring to simply doesn't look anything like this. So for those of you who thought it was, uh, it turns out it is not. I'll tell you, I was really happy to see all the love that Garinger got in the comments from those that remember. Uh, love to see it. Good dude. And that's all I got on that. I, I don't really have a whole, whole lot else to offer. I think it's a decent little figure. I think they could have probably done more given the restrictions that are kind of already placed upon it, but you know, whatever, it's all good. There was the Galvatron from Iron Factory, and a lot of people were saying, what is up with these Legends Galvatrons in their alt modes? And dude, I'm parking my car in the same garage as yours. I feel you 100%. All of them good figures, the New Age, this one, all of them good figures. And I know I didn't have the New Age quite tabbed in right, but it still looks silly when it's when it's alt mode. And Sit Down Saturday, I was really pleasant to see that most people thought that like my perspective on that was, was kind of at least interesting or at least engaging in some regard. Sometimes I, I, I do this stuff in the vacuum, I don't really have people necessarily to bounce ideas off of left and right. And when I see something that like to me is interesting and I take a gamble on it and I'm not really sure if you guys are gonna get into it, it's always very reassuring and pleasant to see a positive response. So thank you guys for that. I appreciate a good audience. And with that being said, I think we can roll right into the conversation regarding this figure. But in order to do so, let's first talk about the figure itself. Let's talk about the reveals that we have available. And I'll be honest with you, when they revealed them, they didn't seem all that excited about it themselves, in my opinion. So what we get is gray prototype stuff, right? And this is more than likely, actually probably 90%, 99% sure that this is a highly detailed, highly finished, high quality 3D print. Patreon folks know what's up and know why it's up. And it's up and it's stuck. Anyway, posing aside, which is dreadful here, and I think we can all agree that the person that posed this probably works in accounting and just had to sort this out really quick before launch time. That aside, there is a fair amount of detailed sculpt work here, and it doesn't look too busy to me. It doesn't look messy to me. All in all, I don't think this is a terrible looking star saber. Now, whenever I see, or I should say victory saber, whenever I see pictures like this, with arm poses like this and how low specifically his left arm is, it immediately makes me think to myself, how long are those arms when they're straight and do they look disproportionate? Looking at the combined alt mode, at least I think that's the combined alt mode, I think that's probably spot on. I don't think that you could ask for much more there. It really looks like they gave it its due diligence and tried to make it as pleasing and as accurate as possible. The little brain master, I think. I don't know. I can't keep him straight. But the little fella looks about what we would expect from something like this. Nothing to write home about, but nothing to cry about either. And the smaller star saver figure, forgive me, I forget his name, doesn't look dreadful. However, you can see where his hands fold up into his forearms. It, it kind of doesn't look any more special than most things that are available in the main line today. Now, there's a twofold point to that. One of them is that it's a statement about the quality of the main line today. The second one is a statement more so on Hasbro Pulse that perhaps things should be a bit more sophisticated when it comes to their offerings. His jet mode looks solid as a rock, and it looks like the little fella will be able to fit up in there too, so no issues there, nothing to complain about. Star Saber on his own looks to me as though there are gonna be some proportion issues. Now, this is the best posed picture, so we'll take a minute and look at it, but this does look a step above what I expect from this company in general in regard even to their main line, which I think have made vast improvements. We don't see a whole lot of hollow pieces here, we don't see a whole lot of what they call waffles. Everything looks detailed, but not overly detailed. Everything looks accurate. 
accurate, at least in spirit. I do have some concerns specifically about proportions once again, though, mainly in regard to the length of the legs versus the length of the arms and probably due to lack of sophistication in regard to making the combined mode work. They needed to try to make it look good in both modes, but don't necessarily perhaps have ways to make it configurable or transformable to have different shapes and proportions for each mode, if that makes sense. We also get images of Star Saber by himself transformed. I think that that looks good. I think that it's an easy one to do, but it doesn't screw the pooch, so therefore, right on target. We didn't get Victory Leo, has been the topic of much conversation here recently, mainly in regard to Flames toys, but here he is yet again. And this, to me, is where this thing begins to fall apart. There's nothing here that looks any more sophisticated than what we already receive at a major retail purchase or general retail, I guess I should say. The way that the arms and poles, the old poles, fold up into the forearms, along with what looks to be a lack of articulation in the lion's head, in addition to lack of articulation both in the front and rear legs, specifically in regard to the poles, doesn't do much for my warm and fuzzies. And then we have the picture of Victory Leo in robot mode. And this is where the main line issues come screaming at me. Hollowness and waffles in the thighs and in the lower legs, as well as the forearms, proportion issues, let alone the obvious posing issues that they seem to be plagued with from Jump Street. This doesn't seem like a Hasbro pulse piece to me, whereas perhaps when they're combined, but certainly Star Saber seems slightly a cut above. And that's what we have right now image wise and that's how I feel about it. Now we're going to move on to that into a conversation regarding its progress. Now we've done this before. We did it with the Unicron specifically. Shout out to Brian Brink, Patreon supporter, Skullface supporter for years. Also is on two podcasts at least. I can't keep track of all the shows that he's on. But at the very least Enter the Realm and Breaking the Mold and you can find out where else he goes from there. So obviously I'm recording this Wednesday so this hasn't been up for all that much time. But if you look here at the Victory Saber backers it's a projection that's higher than the sail barge, which was their first attempt, and far exceeds their Unicron approach. It's much more on target with the Sentinel, Galactus, and Razor Crest. So, but even though it started off stronger than the barge and Unicron, it's still not as good as the other three from the previous attempts, but at least the general arc of it, so to speak, tends to be more on target. Like if you look at just the general shape of it, it's much more online projection-wise of what I think this company as a whole would like to see. So let's start off by talking talking about the choice, right? It's an interesting choice. It's a Japanese continuity thing, which doesn't have the same clout here in the US from Hasbro, which is obviously a US company. However, we have seen a Masterpiece release. We've seen a Flames Toys release. So there's obviously a market for the character. People obviously have some sort of respect and regard for the character and its history in, in response, or at least in relationship to what it means to the brand. But I have to say, it looks like you could do this figure in two separate figures at price points that are currently within the market at like $50 or $80 stuff like we see Titan figures for $125. It just seems like this is something that could hit general retail. Now it's a more obscure figure or character and I would agree with you. However, I don't think that people are really chomping at the bit to get a Fort Max either in regard to obscurity, in regard to mainline. Like people know Optimus Prime, they know Bumblebee, but not everybody knows Fort Max. The fans wanted a Fort Max, so it makes sense to put it out. But I guess what I'm saying is if they were willing to pay $125 for a Fort Max, I think maybe the same audience would have been willing to shell out two separate purchases is for a Star Saber and a Victory Leo in order to make the combination themselves at a general release. Now, I'm not sure that this screams to me that it needed to be a crowdfunding project. But then the question comes in as to what other options do they really have? And this got me thinking. Now they already did an arc for general release. I think had they made an arc that was for crowdfunding, they might have actually been more successful with that because I think had they done that and made it maybe even a little bit bigger, a lot of mainline collectors would have got it kind for the novelty of it. I think a lot of third party collectors that are legends collectors specifically would have got it for potential displays. I think that that's something they could have done. And then in turn, they would have had the option or, or open door at least to kind of explore the idea of doing a nemesis in the same way. Now, outside of that, a good friend of mine who the Patreon folks heard the discussion of yesterday, I hope, suggested that a devastator that was more chugster piece, kind of in the same scale as Unique Toys Bruticus maybe, could have worked if they really put their due diligence in 
into both modes and stuff. However, I also think that that could be successful at retail. And if you did it only through crowdfunding, you might sacrifice the potential money that could be made from retail. So it's a tricky situation in that regard. I think an obscure combiner like a Dino King with the pretenders and shells and all that kind of stuff could have been possible as well. I think that that's something that maybe they might even want to explore in the future. But it does raise a question of with Unicron already done, that being the obvious bullseye for a crowdfunded project for the Transformers brand, where do you go from here? And that's something I would really like for you to put in the comments because I'm, I'm, I'm honestly interested in other people's perspectives as to what they think a good idea for a crowdfunded piece would be. But now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about the price point. It's under $200, right? And it still didn't go kind of balls to the wall in regard to getting funded. It doesn't even match the other success of Galactus or the Sentinel or the Razor Crest. My question about that is, does it show a, a, a semblance or an idea of Hasbro's own confidence in their own brand in regard to the crowdfunding thing? If you have to crowdfund a piece that's actually two pieces that you probably could sell separately, if you have to crowdfund that for an under $200 price point, what sort of indication is that for how they view the financial possibilities for their own brand? I think an interesting or perhaps more daring crowdfunding exploration would have been with that self-transforming prime, but they didn't do that. They put that up as an exclusive and they crowdfunded a $180 toy, which is only 50 bucks more than a Titans class figure, you know, approximately, depending on where you get it, shipping, whatever the case may be. It just, to me, it doesn't scream, we are 100% confident in this brand and we know that whatever we do with it is gold and it's gonna be successful. I got news for you. The next project is gonna be this Rancor, this Black Series Rancor. It will not be under $200, my prediction. And I don't think they have any reservations about putting it out. And that's without even any kind of really major media pushing Star Wars at the moment. And when I mean at the moment, I mean specifically right this second. I know we had Bad Batch. I know more shows are coming, etc. And perhaps it's not an element of confidence in regards to the brand, but perhaps it's a bit of being trigger shy after the trauma that laid before them with Unicron. I don't care what anybody says I, in, in, in some regard. I trust my gut. I always trust my gut first and foremost. And my gut tells me that there was some serious smoke and mirrors that went down in order to get that Unicron funded. I'm happy it did because I love mine. Love it. I couldn't be happier with it. I'm so happy that I chose the way I chose. It is the perfect piece for my collection, the way that my collection is laid out, like to the T. So I'm happy that they did some smoke and mirrors and shady deals and behind closed curtains and closed doors type of arrangements. At least in my opinion, that's what my gut is telling me. I'm happy they did it. But it certainly seems like they did it. And I don't think they could stand to lose face. Just the fact that they had to push the release date back. The fact that the trajectory for the sales weren't great. The fact that they opened it up to other retailers and such. Now, to be fair, there were people out of country that wanted the opportunity to get at it. So I love it. I love that they did all those things, but they definitely pushed the boundaries and did what they had to do to get that funded. I'm going to go out on a limb and say there's not a universe that exists where that didn't get funded. But in order to get it funded, they had to go out there and shake a few trees. And they shook them and they got funded. But now when they reapproach Transformers as a franchise for a crowdfunding project, in my mind, they're sitting there like, look, maybe we don't shoot that high again. Maybe we do something a little lower. But this thing is already, I mean, it's almost halfway there. And this this is going to get funded. But maybe this is the sweet spot for this main line. Maybe under $200, 200 to 250 150 to 250 somewhere in there. Maybe that's the sweet spot for the main line. Maybe that's where the bread and butter really is. And maybe people that are used to spending $20 consistently for them, 250 Like, you know, maybe that all makes sense. Star Wars collectors are generally different, right? Because there's it's rarely the case where a Star Wars collector is just getting one type of Star Wars product. Most Star Wars collectors dabble, right? They got a Hot Toys Vader, they got a couple Black Series, they got a couple vehicles from three and three quarter, they got, you know what I mean? They got a little statue, it could have a key or something maybe over here. Same kind of goes for Marvel, right? Maybe you got a Hot Toys Marvel, you got a quarter scale Marvel, you got trade comic books, you got the $20 figures. So to kind of push yourself or your, your limits or your boundaries to get something is not necessarily outside the realm of possibility. Whereas with Transformers, like there are trans there are many Transformers mainline collectors that are just, that's it. The sun rises and sets with that. Nothing wrong with that, but $200 perhaps sits differently with them, regardless of what their financial state is, right? Because you could just be, no, I'm used to spending, I spend 20 to 50 bucks on this stuff, that's it, top to bottom. 
when something's 500, 600 bucks, like a Unicron, maybe it's like it really is a knee-jerk reaction, right? So anyway, I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting that this is more successful. I think that it's interesting that it's more successful as a Japanese character. When you compare that to Unicron, which is probably one of the most famous Transformers to Transformer collectors, and we've never had a proper one, I think it says something about price. I think it really says something about price, and it says something about what that specific slice of the Transformers fandom is willing, prepared, perhaps even able to spend for a collectible that they're chasing. I think it says something about the way that Unicron has affected Hasbro, Hasbro Pulse, and the way that they view the brand and their confidence within the brand. And I think it says something about how obscure, on the light side of things, how obscure a choice can be as long as you keep the price somewhat moderate to get accomplished. And perhaps maybe they would even approach this with some sort of MP statement, you know, or mindset down the line. You know, they would have got me. They were like, look, we're doing an MP Target Master. It's going to cost you 150 bucks or 200 bucks. They'd have got me. Uh, I am passing on this. This will be the second HasLab project I passed on. I passed on the Razor Crest and I passed on this. I got the Galactus, the Sentinel, which is shipping soon, Unicron, and the Barge. And then, of course, Cookie Monster didn't get made. Justice for Cookie Monster. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be back next week, of course. And until then, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.